King Solomon was the third or the fourth ruler of the United Kingdom of Israel. He is remembered mainly for his wisdom, hence the English idiom as wise as Solomon. However, he was also a very wealthy and powerful king. Solomon is highly revered in the three Abrahamic faiths of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and is also mentioned in the Hebrew Bible, which we call the Old Testament, the Quran, as well as the Hadiths. In addition to these religious books, there are various legends that have grown around the figure of Solomon in later times that have further elevated his larger-than-life character. Yet, despite all this, the story of Solomon ends as a tragedy, as his kingdom fragments into two when he dies. After his death, the kingdom of Israel fragments into the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. The disintegration of the kingdom has been regarded as God's punishment for the king's descent into sin, and therefore, the story of Solomon may read as a morality tale as well. Most of what we know about King Solomon's life and reign is found in the Hebrew Bible, and in particular, the first 11 chapters of the first book of Kings and the first 9 chapters of the second book of Chronicles. In the Hebrew Bible, we learn that Solomon was the son of David and a lady known as Bathsheba. Solomon's mother had been the wife of Uriah the Hittite, one of David's generals. According to the story, Uriah was on a mission abroad when David, from a rooftop, saw Bathsheba bathing. Consumed by lust, David had Bathsheba brought to him and got her pregnant. I'll send for the woman in the morning, sir. And I'll send for her now. She shall dine with me tonight. I'm only a man, Bathsheba. I need someone to understand that. I need the kind of understanding that only one human being can give to another. When he learned that Bathsheba was Uriah's wife, David wanted to hide his misdeed, and therefore, he arranged to have his general killed. To do this, he ordered Uriah to be on the front lines where the battle was the heaviest, and had his comrades desert him during the battle. Once Uriah was killed by the enemy, David married Bathsheba. The death of the couple's first child is regarded to have been God's punishment for David's sin. The king later repented and Solomon was born. Solomon was not David's eldest son. Therefore, he was not the natural heir. Despite this, he succeeded his father as king. As David was approaching his death years, the court was divided regarding the issue of succession. The two main contenders to the throne were Solomon and his older half-brother Adonijah. According to Hebrew tradition, Adonijah was supposed to succeed David as the king. The boy had powerful supporters, the main ones being the army commander Joab and the high priest Abiathar. And as David lay on his deathbed, Adonijah announced his claim to the throne. One of Solomon's supporters was the prophet Nathan, who warned Bathsheba about Adonijah's actions. Bathsheba and Nathan conspired to have David proclaim Solomon as king. Their plan worked, and when Adonijah's supporters heard of the news, they fled at once. 
Adonijah sought refuge in the tent that was housing the Ark of the Covenant and was pardoned by Solomon. However, later on, Adonijah was put to death. To consolidate his own position, Solomon ruthlessly purged his opponents and put his supporters in positions of power. After Solomon had secured his throne, he turned his attention to matters outside his kingdom. One of the first things he did was to form an alliance with Egypt. The alliance was sealed by making the daughter of the Egyptian pharaoh his primary wife. Apart from diplomacy, Solomon could rely on the kingdom's military might. According to ancient religious records, Solomon had over 40,000 stalls for horses and chariots, as well as 12,000 mounted cavalry. Therefore, military operations were carried out in Syria so as to gain control of the overland trading route. But instead of merely occupying the area with a military force, Solomon pursued a policy of colonization and established civilian colonies in the conquered areas. In the Old Testament, Solomon is described as a powerful king ruling over a big kingdom. We learn that he ruled over all the kingdoms from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines as far as the border of Egypt. In addition, he is said to have received a tribute of 666 talents, which is about 18,000 kilograms of gold in a single year. The kingdom of Israel also prospered as a result of trade. As the king increased his wealth, together with the relative peace during his reign, he was able to carry out monumental projects. For example, in Jerusalem, Solomon built a magnificent palace for himself and expanded the city walls. But his most ambitious building project was the building of the temple. This is the temple that is known as Solomon's Temple or the First Temple. The monument not only served as the permanent home for God and the Ark of the Covenant, but it was also the symbol of unity for the Jewish people. The temple was later destroyed when Jerusalem was conquered in 587 BC by the Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar II. The construction of the temple took seven years to complete, and the resources required for the project reflected Solomon's power as a monarch. Building materials for the temple, as well as Solomon's other construction projects, were contributed by Hiram I, the Phoenician king of Tyre. In return, Solomon sent large allotments of food to the city every year. As for manpower, Solomon used slaves from non-Israelite tribes, including the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. When the temple was completed and the Ark of the Covenant placed within the Holy of Holies, the king celebrated by offering a sacrifice of 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. After that, there was a feast that lasted 14 days. Given that the temple was an architectural marvel, it is no wonder that some of the later legends about Solomon revolve around it. One of the legends is that the king used demons to construct the temple. The story of how Solomon gained the power to control demons can be found in the pseudographic work known as the Testament of Solomon. In the Testament of Solomon, we come across episodes where the king is dealing with demons. During the construction of the temple, the king's chief overseer was said to be plagued by a demon who stole half his wages and food and drained his life by sucking the thumb of his right hand. 
Solomon noticed that the overseer was thin and wondered what was happening. He sought to find out why he was paying the overseer a lot of money and giving him food, yet the overseer was thin. The overseer confessed to Solomon that a demon was coming and taking half of his pay as well as sucking his thumb which made him thin. Not knowing what to do, Solomon prayed to God for help. God sent the archangel Michael to give Solomon a magical ring that had the seal of God in the shape of a pentagram. This magical ring gave Solomon the power to control demons. After Solomon used the ring to subdue the demon that was harassing his chief overseer, the king had him bring Belzebul, the chief of the demons, before him. Using his ring, Solomon controlled Belzebul and commanded him to bring another demon. This went on until a large number of demons were assembled before the king. Solomon then proceeded to interrogate the demons one by one and learned from each of them their name, where they lived, their zodiac sign, which angel they originally were, their functions, and how they attack people. He also found out from the demons which angels had power over them, and in certain cases, the word which could drive them away. The Testament of Solomon is a book on demonology that was quite popular during the first millennium AD. There are many other stories about Solomon dealing with the demons. For example, it is claimed that he used them to construct the temple. The huge stones used to make the temple are said to have rose and settled in their respective places on their own. This is a sign that they were being moved by the demons under Solomon's control. Another legend talks about the Shamir, which is an object or a creature that had the power to alter stone, iron, and even diamond. Since metal was considered to be an item of war, metal tools were prohibited in the construction of the temple. Therefore, Solomon desired to obtain the Shamir. In one version of the story, it was the demon Asmodeus, also known as Ashmedia, that revealed the location of Shamir to Solomon. In another version, it was Solomon's eagle that brought the Shamir from paradise. There is also a third version, where the Shamir was entrusted by the prince of the sea to a mountain cock who was sworn to guard it. When Solomon's men found the cock's nest, they covered it with glass. The bird used the Shamir to break the glass and Solomon's men scared the bird, causing it to drop the Shamir and allowing them to capture it. The Shamir is often described as a worm, although in some versions, it is said to be an object perhaps with radioactive properties. Still with the legends of Solomon, in one legend, the king asked Ashmedai the demon what could make demons more powerful over men. Ashmedai requests Solomon to bring his ring in order to demonstrate. When the king brought the ring to Ashmedai, the demon threw it in the sea where it was swallowed by a fish. The demon then swallowed Solomon and spat him out across a great distance. As a result, Solomon was reduced to a pauper far away from his own kingdom and was forced to wander from city to city. He eventually arrived in an Ammonite city and found work in the king's kitchen. One day, he prepared a meal for the king who found it so delicious that he had Solomon replace the previous cook. In time, the king's daughter, Naama, fell in love with Solomon. However, the king disapproved of this relationship as he thought that Solomon was a commoner and therefore had the couple banished. Solomon and Naama wandered until they arrived in a coastal city where they bought a fish to eat. As Solomon was preparing the meal, he found his magic ring in the fish belly, thereby regaining his throne. Coming back to biblical sources, Solomon is described as a wise king. In the first book of Kings, God appears to Solomon in a dream 
offering him whatever he wanted. Solomon asks for wisdom, and this pleased God so much that he did not only grant his wish, but also gave him wealth, power, and prosperity. The story that follows is arguably the best known story about Solomon's wisdom. In this biblical tale, two women came before Solomon with their babies, one alive and the other dead. Each woman claimed to be the mother of the living child. Solomon ordered the child to be brought before him and commanded his guard to cut the child in two so that each woman could have an equal peace. One of the women renounced her claim as the mother of the child so as to save the child. By this means, Solomon concluded that this woman was the real mother. Solomon's wisdom spread far and wide and drew many visitors to his court. One of the most famous of these was the Queen of Sheba, who ruled a kingdom in what is today Ethiopia and Yemen. In the biblical account, the Queen of Sheba visited Solomon in Jerusalem and brought with her gifts of gold and spices. In return, the king offered the queen all that she desired. According to Ethiopian tradition, the visit of the Queen of Sheba to Solomon's court resulted in a child, the future Menelikwan, who was the founder of Ethiopia's Solomonic dynasty. The dynasty ruled over Ethiopia until its last emperor, Haile Selassie I, was deposed in 1974. But as Solomon's reign progressed, he began to drift away from God. In his 20th year as a king, God appeared to him in a dream once again. In this dream, God promised the king wisdom, wealth, and power. At the same time, Solomon was issued with a warning. If he or his family turned away from God and worshipped other gods, they would be cut away from the land of Israel and the temple rejected by God. For all his wisdom, Solomon seems to have failed to heed God's warning. According to historical records, Solomon had over 700 wives and 300 concubines, many of whom were not from Israel. These women brought their gods with them, and Solomon is said to have been led astray by them. He began to commit idolatry and worshipped these foreign deities. An alternative view is that Solomon's marriages were aimed at forming alliances with the neighboring non-Israelite tribes. And by worshipping these foreign gods, he was improving his relationship with his allies. In any case, God was greatly displeased and chaos ensued in Israel. When Solomon died, the United Kingdom of Israel was divided into two. The Northern Kingdom, known as the Kingdom of Israel, was established by one of Solomon's officials who rebelled. The official was known as Jeroboam. On the other hand, the Southern Kingdom, known as the Kingdom of Judah, was ruled by Rehoboam, who was Solomon's son. Solomon ruled for a total of 40 years, and the Hebrew Bible states that he died of natural causes. One interesting account of Solomon's death is found in the Quran. According to this source, Solomon died before the temple was completed. As the king was leaning on his staff when he died, the demons, or in this case the jinns, who were working for him, did not know of his death, and therefore continued to build the temple. At the same time, a worm was eating its way through the staff. A year later, the staff was hollowed out, causing Solomon's body to collapse and his death to be known by all. But by that time, the temple had been completed. What do you think about King Solomon's story? Did you learn something new that you didn't know before? 
let us know in the comment section below. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up so that we reach more people.